Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Four Color Ascendancy. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well, and yes, we are playing a four color Broker's Ascendancy list. Should have probably mentioned that it was Broker's Ascendancy in the uh, intro there, but this deck is created by the amazing uh, fellow content creator Power Dragon. I have a funny story about this one, which we'll talk about after we get into uh, game one a little bit here. Uh, but the idea is to really capitalize, of course, on Broker's Ascendancy, which is a card that I've seen in a lot of really interesting builds. Sometimes it does really well, sometimes it doesn't feel like it does much at all. Uh, in this deck, I've found it in practice to be relatively good. So uh, at the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control, and then of course a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. Now, we do like to double up on that, hence having Vorinclex here. Uh, we've got two of them. Basically, anytime you put a counter on a permanent or player, you instead put uh, twice that many. So for um, things like Kaya, things like Loth, uh, even things like Luminar Gasparant, we're going to be doubling all of those counters, which is hugely, hugely beneficial, obviously. Uh, now, the early turns of the game are very controlling. Uh, so we do have Blood Chief's Thirst. We do have Infernal Grasp. The Meat Hook Massacre is a really nice include because it just gives us the ability to sweep if we need to. Uh, and then... Uh, we do have the eye twitch, which allows us to, of course, pull things from our uh, sideboard here if we need to. Uh, Luminar Casperant does allow us, again, of course, to double up and hopefully throw a lot of 1-1 counters on things. Uh, it also allows us to kind of get out of range of opposing Meat Hook Massacres, especially with the Ascendancy, uh, as the game progresses. So it's it's a really beneficial card for us. This does have Rafine as a 3 of, uh, which again makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're thinking about the connive triggers here. Uh, doubling up on those counters every time you connive is actually pretty huge, uh, especially if you do it extra times in a turn. So definitely useful. The Celestis for a little bit of ramp, it also gives us a little bit of a game life mechanic. Uh, which, again, may not seem like a ton, but you have to think about the meta right now. A lot of it is very aggro-centric or very controlling. Uh, and so against the, like, Boros aggro decks, which I see just constantly on the best of one ladder, at least right now, uh, just a couple extra points of life might mitigate an attack or two throughout the course of the game, uh, which could be enough to actually keep you in the game. So it it's certainly worth having in here. Uh, it also does ramp us, of course, and fix our mana, uh, which given that we are a four color deck, can certainly be an issue. It's not necessarily something that we're expecting to be an issue, but it can be. Uh, Binding of the, <coughs> excuse me, Binding of the Old Gods, uh, a great option to, again, help fix our mana, get rid of a permanent on the opponent's side of the field. It can be any permanent, which is super helpful. Uh, and then, of course, give Death Touch to all of our creatures uh, on that third level. Generally not super important, but uh, the first two are very important. Uh, Wandering Emperor, Loth, and then, of course, Kaya. That's our Planeswalker package. And then, again, Vorinclex sitting at the top here. Uh, like I said, mana is the only trick with this. Being a four-color deck, I think, Power Dragon, you did a great job of putting together a lands package that does make sense for it. Uh, but... In general, uh, in practice, again, I've played a handful of games. I want to say like three games uh, with this deck prior to, just so I could fully understand the, the play patterns. Um, and in doing so, I found that every once in a while, lands can be an issue. So we're going to hopefully not run into that, but certainly it is a possibility to be aware of uh, before we jump in here, guys. But let's do it. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Power Dragon, thank you so much, my friend, for sharing this list over on Aether Hub. I do appreciate it. Let's see if we can get some wins, guys. All right, guys, here we are for game one, and we will get into that story as well. But uh, how do we feel about this? I think it's pretty good, actually. Uh, we do have all of the mana we need to cast everything, basically. So I I'm feeling relatively comfortable with this. Uh, so here's my funny story with this deck as we're getting into uh, turn one here. Um, when I... Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, let's, let's just drop that. Uh, when I first started, I found this deck, it really caught my eye, and so I imported it into Arena and said, you know what, yeah, let's jump into it, let's practice with it, maybe see what we can do. Uh, as soon as I did that, the, <laughs> the first deck I found myself, or the first person, I should say, that I found myself against was Power Dragon, <laughs> uh, which is fascinating to me because I, 
I've never seen Power Dragon on the ladder. Like, I've just never faced him on the ladder. Uh, and so it was fascinating to actually get to play him with his own deck. I'm very fortunate to say that I did win it. Um, but again, I'm sure he was very aware of what was going on. Uh, but it was just interesting. That never has happened to me before, where I've been able to play the creator of the deck. Uh, and so it was really cool to be able to do that. But uh, all that to say, it was just kind of a random experience here. Um, I guess we'll just take this. I don't really know what like the right call is, necessarily. Um, so, let's see. Let's do this. Let's do this, and then I think we'll just kill one of these guys. Uh, I mean, normally I would wait on that, but I don't really care that much, and we're obviously going to get a counter here on the eye twitch, so we can start trading off a little bit here. We do have Rafine that can come down next turn as well, which is quite good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll just see what happens. Uh, I'm curious if they attack in. Well, they do. Uh, I will block. I don't know what they might have, but my assumption is, given the land package here, that they've got quite a bit of removal. I'm kind of okay to just go ahead and pull the trigger and get this one going. I will just pull a mascot exhibition. We're one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so we need two more lands. We've got the environmental sciences to help us get there. Seems like an easy one. Next turn is Rafine plus environmental sciences. Oh, nice. <laughs> Patch up, huh? Uh, interesting. I have not seen this card played, um, ever, uh, <laughs> which is fine. All right, so our lands are available to us, which is great. Um, let's go ahead and pull second green just to make sure if something happens to our Celestis, it'd be great to be able to play the Vorinclex without having to worry about the lands. So, uh, let's make sure that we're pulling the correct land here. Uh, and again, I mean, Rafine's going to be a little bit trickier to deal with. Certainly if they just have like an Infernal Grasp, they can kind of get us. But uh, we do have just a Mascot Exhibition coming down next turn. <clears throat> I'm thankful to say mana has not been the issue this game. Uh, which again, can certainly be an issue. So it's just something to consider. I will take the action just to see. Um, <laughs> interesting. Um... Let's see, do we just want Kaya? I kinda do just want Kaya. Uh, I know I'm giving up a land here. Okay, well, it worked out in our favor anyway. Um, trying to think of double blue in the deck. I don't know that we have anything. All right, so what I'm gonna do is Kaya first. Uh, expecting that this may... Wait, can I return up to one target spell? Okay. So I'm assuming they're just going to return the Kaya to the hand. They can't target Rafine because of the ward cost. So uh, as annoying as this is, it's really not the end of the world. <laughs> um, and I will just go ahead and attack. Okay, we'll unfortunately just discard a land. It's not going to get an extra counter. Um, but again, keeping in mind that we've gained a little bit of life with the environmental science and the Celestis, so uh, we're, we're sort of ahead on the life total matchup here, which just allows us to kind of play a little bit more aggressively at this point in the game. Um, and certainly it's not, you know, perfect, but our Rafine beats their Rafine. That is for sure. Uh, Kaya is also great because we can deal with Rafine pretty easily. Uh, yeah. This is kind of fine. It's not great, but it's also fine. Um, nice. Alright. Um, so, what? They've got two mana available. I do think we just Kaya here. Uh, the question is, what do we exile? Because I do think we have to exile something. Um, I feel feel like it's probably just the Rafine. Um, I'll auto pay that, that's fine. Uh, we can play the land, I don't really see a reason not to, and I'm actually not going to attack, I do kind of want to keep Kaya around, uh, and crucially now at this point we actually just block the interceptor anyway, so um, if they want to double attack the Kaya, uh, we can block with Rafine, kill one of the things. Certainly they kill Kaya, but then we just have a mascot exhibition coming down. Um, we do also have Hive of the Eye Tyrant, worth noting. 
um, and they do have Cave of the Frost Dragon plus their own Hive of the Eye Tyrant. So just some things to consider about the board state right now. Uh, this is an interesting game, actually. Um, looks, I mean, Esper Control essentially versus four color Ascendancy. This is an interesting play. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, I think we block. I think we block the underdog. I'm not really sure. Are they gonna phase out the Rafine? Okay. Well, I mean, that's pretty good play. They're gonna be able to do some stiff. Uh, I, there's really no reason to tap this. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, they didn't phase out the thing. Okay. Well, I'm gonna save Gaia. I'll take five, that's cool. Uh, they do gain the life here. This does have lifelink, which is worth noting. Um, I mean, <laughs> pretty sure the, the play is relatively clear here. Uh, let's do this, let's do this. Um, I will attack in here. We kind of have to start dealing with their life total. I'm actually going to get rid of the Luminar cast for it. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. What's nice is Broker's Ascendancy is about to power up everything. Yeah, so uh, even Kaya here gets a nice little buff. Um, and so basically all of our stuff can trade. If they just have a meat hook or something, like it's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, sure. So they can exile Rafine if they want, uh, which is pretty good. Um, but they decide not to. Fascinating, okay. They're gonna attack me with that. I assume they're gonna attack Kaya, maybe not. Maybe they just, yeah, okay, sick. Um, I mean, I can easily just double block here, right? Yeah, I think we just do that. I, like, I'd rather just kill their stuff, if that makes sense. Um, and not really worry about any of the other stuff. Uh, what's nice is when this dies, we get it back again, which is cool too. Um, all right, so let's throw the Luminar Casperant down. Let's go ahead and plus up on Kaya. Uh, we could have exiled this, but we really don't need to. Um, let's throw a counter on Rafine. All right, uh, we'll attack here. We'll attack here. They do have Tenacious Underdogs, so uh, as well as quite a number of other, you know, possibilities for dealing quite a bit of damage. So some things to consider. I'm going to just uh, throw the Rafine's Towers back and leave up Manland plus, or Manland or, I should say, Infernal Grass. Um, yeah, that seems fine. All right, cool. Uh, Kaya is able to ultimate if we would like to. Uh, I don't think... There's too much we actually care about, though. Legendary spell from our hand, from our graveyard, or from among cards you own. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we really don't have a reason to want to uh, ultimate the Kaya. Not really worried about that. So we won't. And that'll be it. We'll just kill some stuff. All right, they're going to Blitz. Uh, love the auto tapper here. That was helpful. Okay. Uh, I suppose we'll see where they attack first. This really isn't a good game ending kind of play. Um, they can deal six. Uh, and let's see. Do we Infernal Grasp? I honestly don't think so. Um, I think we just take six. They're tapped out. Like, <laughs> that doesn't seem very good. Um... This seems like a, a middle ground play, like they just don't have a better option. So I'm fine with them not having a better option. Great. You did it. You drew some cards. You dealt six. Certainly not bad. I will take that action. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, now we just win. <laughs> uh, Vorinclex. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and plus up Vorinclex just to be safe. And there we go. 
That was beautiful. That was exactly what we wanted. It was a closer game than expected, but Power Dragon, we made it, man. I love it. Let's see if we can keep it up. Keep it up. Wow, I can talk. <laughs> The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash itresolves for details. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and yeah, I mean, again, we can we can certainly keep this. Uh, we don't have, oh no, we do, I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot this is Pyra's headquarters, not the other one. Um, I think with that in mind, we are gonna run this out. I think the play is definitely gonna get to the Broker's Ascendancy on turn one, or, uh, wow, turn three, I think seems like the best option. Um, with that, we do lose the ability for black mana here. That could be a big risk, but seeing the Hive of the Eye Tyrant makes me assume that they are more of a control deck or, or something like that. Um, Grixis, yeah, I think we're... Definitely looking at something closer to that realm. So let's go ahead and Broker's Ascendancy here. Fully expect a Jwari Disruption or some kill spell, a Fading Hope. Okay. Honestly, that's better because it's just a stall tactic. Um, I, I'd rather that than maybe a lot of other things. So we'll see what happens. Kaito, sure. Kaito's great. Um, okay. Uh. I think we'll throw this down, and obviously, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, so we just kind of throw this one out. Again, mana has been slightly awkward, but um, we're, we're kind of solving the problem as we go here, so that's fine. Uh, they are going to attack, they get a free draw, uh, which is phenomenal for sure. We'll see what they, they play this turn. I'm, I'm curious about the red. Is that just for a late game play, or, you know, what could that be for? March of Sorrow. What did they exile? An eye twitch? Okay. They're very quickly running out of cards here, which is nice. Um, let's make sure we throw this out because we do need the Meat Hook Massacre, I think, at some point. We'll just throw an eye twitch down. Um, I'm actually not going to spar as headquarters quite yet. We may decide to cycle it, but we'll see. Um, they are very stuck on land, which is phenomenal. <laughs> uh, I like that. <laughs> um, they're going to march an eye twitch. Okay. That's a weird play. Uh, it's a very odd play. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's potentially mass I think it's mascot exhibition here's the thing when you've got a broker's ascendancy on the battlefield mascot exhibition becomes like super good <laughs> uh, because it's not just that you're getting the three creatures it's that you're getting the three creatures and then they immediately get a lot stronger <laughs> um, so maybe it's incorrect I mean environmental sciences is definitely an important play here but like that seems pretty good um, yeah I I think we just do this. Uh, I mean, we just do it for one. Uh, kind of awkward. We actually should have Spar's headquarters there. That was definitely incorrect. Uh, they do get a treasure token worth noting. Um, yeah, we should have Spar's headquarters. That would have given us the tapped land. So next turn we could have had the guaranteed mascot exhibition, or it would have given us the second green, which would have given us, of course, four and clex. So. That was a bit of a bad play on my end to play the Swamp. Uh, we did not need it. We had both black sources already there. All right, cool. Uh, we're still not gonna cycle this because it is a green source and we do need double green, so. They got their land. All right. Interesting. So let's do this. Um, I think, yeah, I think we're going to go here. We're just going to Kaya. Uh, this plays around Jwari Disruption, which is relatively important. Um, what do we kill here? I think it's the Kaito. Uh, because this is going to get a counter on it, so the Goblin alone isn't actually going to deal with it. Um, which is quite helpful. All right. They do get to Fable here, which is kind of annoying, but um, I'm curious to see this. I mean, they have, I'm sure, 
a very strong removal package, so I'm curious to know what's gonna happen here. We definitely just get rid of Meat Hook. That's fine. That sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Um, okay. Uh, let's... Again, we're not really playing around a counter spell, but let's just go ahead and Mascot Exhibition. This plays a little bit better around Invoke Despair in particular, um, because obviously if they just have another Invoke Despair, we're gonna have to get rid of the Ascendancy, which kinda sucks, but we can choose to get rid of, you know, one of our lesser important creatures uh, versus just running a Vorinclex out and then it dying immediately, so. This should be better. Interesting that they go for the attack there. Um, I mean, we definitely just block with a 4-3. And they have Leer. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's super good. So they, I assume, just Fading Hope, yeah. All right. I mean, hey, that was really good. Um, So we do have Hive of the Eye Tyrant, um, which will die, unfortunately, like immediately. Um, I think because of that, we can't go that route. I think we just have to Vorinclex. Uh, let's do this. So they can't kill this. They can kill this, but they have to sack Leer to do it. So yeah, this seems fine. Um, they do have Invoke Despair available. They've got a lot of things available, so I'm sure they can. I'm really surprised at that jump block. That seemed a little odd, um, but now everything gets a lot bigger. Uh, we basically just have to hope they don't have a big sweeper, I guess. Invoke Despair sucks, but it's not the end of the world. They can march, I suppose, uh, but that's gonna take their turn which I'm super cool with, as it turns out. Yep, they're gonna march for eight. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's very good. Uh, wow, they got rid of the Silent Spider for that. That's a pretty bold play. And they left themselves pretty open to the Hive here, which is great. So let's just do that. Um, I think we get rid of the Invoked Despair. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of Invoke Despair just because it kills the Ascendancy, and I don't really want that to be the case. This is nice also because we do get the the free attack with the Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which means it's going to get a counter this upcoming turn. Uh, I'm actually going to hold on to the Forest. Sandbagging here isn't necessarily amazing, but what it does allow is if we draw the Celestis, uh, it gives us a card to discard later, so I think we just take that opportunity. Um, they do still have a march, so they can obviously still kill something here. Oh, they have a march in hand, sure. Nice job. Gaining quite a bit of life back. Um, they do have to worry about the clock here, but I guess they are technically okay, because they can just kill this, but we do have a hive, so... <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now I will play the land. I will say, though, truthfully, I still think we want to go this route because I actually would rather kill more of their stuff. Yeah, I, I still think it's this. Um, and I mean, I think it's pretty clearly just a march. Yeah, sick. Um, Vorinclex can obviously come down and just Mollywop for six, which is pretty awesome. Um, cool. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I think we're pretty well set up. Like, they literally have to kill the Inkling. Uh, they probably shouldn't attack. Okay, <laughs> never mind. I guess they want to. Um, Kaya. Well, that's quite good. Is this instant speed? Totally is instant speed. All right. Let's see, so if we do this, do we still have enough? One, two, three, four. Yep. All 
All right, so let's uh, let's force the issue now. It seems like a reasonable play. I'm gonna exile Lear. So now in response, they basically are gonna have to do something, which is fine. Okay, sure. Annoying, but fine. Uh, now they can fading hope their Lear. Sick. Yep. Uh, but that does mean these are no longer available at the moment. So that's all we needed to be able to get in with the Hive of the Eye Tyrant and then get rid of the other March. So that's fine. Uh, hopefully this last card is not a kill spell. All right, let's get rid of the March. They no longer can do any of that. Um, deal five. Everything's getting a counter. Sick. All right. Let's see. Uh, they do have something. Okay, a little chat. They're going to chat with us a little bit, guys. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Hopefully they can't win. Uh, we do just have Vorinclex also. Worth noting here that, like, we can kind of just throw Vorinclex at them. Um, they do have their own Hive of the Eye Tyrant and Hall of the Storm Giants, apparently. Um, which is quite good, but it doesn't really solve their problem. Leer doesn't really solve their problem either because they're investing quite a bit of their mana. And heck yeah, guys, we did it. That's awesome. This has been a couple of fairly long games, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. But technically, that was an undefeated run. That was awesome. And we ranked up. Go us. Let's talk about this. All right, so first and foremost, again, Power Dragon, thank you so much, my friend, for sharing this list. I am going to mark this as undefeated. Uh, one thing that came up in a previous video is because I practice games or practice a deck prior to, people don't consider certain things undefeated runs. Um, I know I was salty when I talked about it last time. I'm genuinely not anymore. Uh, I get it. I, I understand why you think that's not an undefeated run, but the reality is when I sit down to record, you see the entirety of the recording. And if from start to finish on recording, it was undefeated, it's undefeated. And so I'm going to mark it as such. Uh, this was only two games. However, the, the games were really good. Uh, I think we handled everything relatively well. Um, I don't think we missed any obvious things. Maybe we did, uh, but Power Dragon, this deck did phenomenal. Uh, I really enjoy this deck. I think it's great. Thankfully, we did not run into too many mana issues. I think in the second game, we definitely could have played a little cleaner in that regard, um, but overall, it was great. Uh, it worked out fantastically. So thank you so much for sharing this list. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment down below. We'd really appreciate it. But guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again very soon.